Hello from NASA, the National Assembly of State Arts Agencies. I'm Kelly Barsdate. As the professional association of all the state arts councils, NASA has had a great bird's eye view of our field's growth over time. In the past 50 years, you've woven a creative infrastructure that reaches every corner of our country. Your work supports our nation's cultural vibrancy and nurtures the educational, economic, and civic well-being of communities. I'll share a little of that story with you now to mark some of our milestones as a field and to put the work you do today in a national context. It began in Utah in 1899 with the founding of the very first State Arts Council. Utah had only been a state for three years. Minnesota created its State Arts Agency not long afterwards, in 1902. Clearly, the arts were a priority in building a foundation for civic life. True then, still true today. Before September of 1965, 18 state arts agencies had been established, either through legislation or executive order. But the creation of the National Endowment for the Arts in October of that year incentivized the creation of more. By 1975, there were agencies in all 50 states and six jurisdictions. As your arts councils were born, legislatures built some distinctive things into your DNA, principles that are still fundamental to your work. Citizen-driven decision-making is one distinguishing factor. Another is a mandate for the arts to be accessible to everyone. State arts agencies were built to distribute grants, including, in most states, grants for artists and operating support. Those set you apart from many foundations and the NEA, too. State arts agencies also follow sunshine laws, like open panels and board meetings, public hearings, and transparent funding policies. And two-thirds of you have enabling legislation that recognizes artistic freedom. In 1965, state legislatures appropriated $1.9 million to the state arts councils that existed at the time. Today, legislatures are investing $360 million in state arts agencies. That adds up to $10.1 billion during the last 50 years. Many of those dollars were used for grant making. Since NASA started counting in the 1980s, you've made more than 767,000 grant awards. That's a reach broader than any other arts funder. You achieved a profound democratization of arts funding across rural and urban areas, small and large groups, wealthy and poor neighborhoods, in opera houses, school gymnasiums, and on street corners. Helping to fuel this work is a partnership with the NEA. When the NEA was created, Congress directed the agency to carry out a program of grants and aid to the states. Within a decade, Congress converted that funding to a percentage of the NEA's grant budget. It started as 20% in 1975. Then it rose to 30, then 35%. Since 1997, 40% of NEA grant funding has been dedicated to states and regions. These funds are used to support each agency's unique plan to make grants and provide statewide services. That partnership between the NEA and the states has had a tremendous ripple effect, ultimately leveraging more than $201 billion in matching dollars at the local level. But the work of state arts agencies goes far beyond giving grants. You play other leadership roles as conveners, advocates, and incubators. You've also been policy entrepreneurs. For instance, take public art. In 1967, there was one state of the nation with a public art statute, Hawaii. Today, more than half of the states have them, and many local policies exist too. State arts agencies played an integral role in pioneering these laws. State Arts Councils also helped to develop a local arts agency infrastructure. In 1965, there were an estimated 125 local arts agencies. Today, that number is approaching 5,000, many of which were midwived by your community development offices. State Arts Agencies also have nurtured networks. For example, the Association of American Culture's early leaders were state arts agencies, and you continue to be an important backbone in this network today. You have used your leadership role to promote the public value of the arts to many audiences and to build recognition for artists. You've expanded artists' visibility and created new markets for their work within states and across state lines. You propagate good planning practices that help citizens build a shared vision for the arts. With designated funds from the NEA, you've created a national infrastructure of support for the traditional arts. You've built Arts education programs devoting more than a third of your grants to arts learning. You engaged 2.7 million high school students in Poetry Out Loud and been champions of the underserved, facilitating universal access to the arts. 
The road hasn't always been easy. Since 1965, our field has endured seven recessions. We've survived the culture wars and seen multiple swings of the political pendulum and public attitudes toward government. Our field's history is a long-term growth story, but it's been punctuated by steep cuts. State arts agencies lost more than 40% of their appropriations in the last recession. You had to dial back on grants, programs, staffing, just about everything went into austerity mode. Several of you went to the brink of elimination and had to fight for your survival. But here's why there's cause for optimism about the future. NASA looks across the country and sees stories of resilience, like the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs, which took more than a 90% appropriations cut. They've since rebounded by more than $9 million and are a leading voice for the arts and community and economic development. We see your ingenuity with a continual flow of new initiatives like creative placemaking and cultural entrepreneurship. We see you sustaining keystone programs that draw on the distinctive cultural character of your state. You're developing partnerships and alliances with many different sectors like natural resources, and tourism, education, transportation, and healthcare. And you're demonstrating how the arts have the power to address some of government's most persistent problems. Our field was formed in the cultural crucible that was the 1960s with all the contradictions that time contained. And our work isn't done. Once again, we're facing generation-defining civil rights issues, economic turbulence, war, and environmental change. These are wicked problems that our society needs the arts to help address. Meanwhile, demography and technology are changing the way the arts are made and consumed, even changing the definition of art itself. State arts agencies enter into this era with plenty of challenges and some diminished resources, but also with potent assets to offer. You are helping communities cope with some of the most difficult issues and experiences of our time. You're wielding sophisticated data about the economic and educational outcomes of the arts. You've got advocacy savvy and the ability to elevate the voice of the citizens you serve. You can leap tall piles of grant contracts in a single bound. You've shown flexibility in negotiating state bureaucracies. You're not afraid of heavy lifting, and you have a well-developed sense of adventure. Wherever your journey takes you, NASA is here to help. We're a resource for sharing knowledge and research to get you the facts and prevent you from having to reinvent the wheel. NASA's your voice in Congress, advocating for federal policies that benefit your agencies back at the state level. And we're a professional community where you can learn from each other and celebrate your successes. To connect with NASA and get the latest news, visit our website or follow us on Facebook. We're here to help, so don't hesitate to be in touch.